we got some great tips. Uh, search for and find just the right tattoo artist. After all, ink's a forever thing. Check it out. Blue Collar Ink, coming up. Kahuna here. You know, we've talked to a lot of you in our interviews, and you've given us some great ideas. We decided we want to put some of those ideas in motion and maybe give you some information as a result because of some of the stuff you've been asking us. We call it Blue Collar Inc. Katie's going to be the host of Blue Collar Inc. So I'm going to turn it over to Katie Kaz and I'm going to let her tell you all about what we've got in store. Hey guys, Katie Kaz here for Tad Stories. Thank you so much for joining us. Like Ahuna mentioned, we're going to start talking about a little bit of our segment called Blue Collar Inc. We spent a lot of time, our team, myself, and Kahuna, soliciting answers from you all about what type of topics you want to hear about, what questions you have about the tattoo selection process, how to choose an artist, how to care for your tattoos. So we compiled a lot of those questions, and we're going to talk really candidly about some of the research we've done, even some recommendations and opinions we have, maybe a couple stories of our own related to those topics so you guys can learn more. And eventually we'll be asking all of you for more questions in the future so you can help be part of the conversation. We're going to bring you our first topic. And you know it was something that you gave us a lot of feedback on. As a matter of fact, it was the biggest question people had. Katie, tell them what it is. Yeah, absolutely. And rightfully so. So your guys' biggest question was, how do I search for and select the right tattoo artist for my tattoo? And this can be a particularly daunting decision, especially if it's your first piece that you're getting. There's so many things to consider, and we want to talk through that with some of you guys. A couple things to consider, and John, feel free to chime in here too. What's the style of the artist you're looking for, and does that align with the type of piece that you want? What's your artist's price range? Um, do they specialize in any sort of certain style, color, you know, Japanese art, lettering, portraits? You can even go as far to say, does the artist and does their studio have the right vibe that I'm looking for? Do we get along and are they hearing what I'm asking for in my piece? What do you think, Una? Yeah, I think that's a really good thing to think about. The other thing I'd say is we want to give you some practical tips on how to search. Because you know what? If you understand how to go out there and find folks, then you can make the right choice based on the kinds of things Katie's talking about. So with that said, let's see if we can not dig and dive in and take a look at, gee, how do you search first? Then we're going to talk a little bit about once you find some folks, how do you pick just the right one for that piece that you want? Absolutely. You know, we told you we were going to tell you a little bit how to search for an artist. I'm going to throw it over to Katie, and she's going to give you some great ideas on how to use that wonderful thing called the Internet. Yeah, it can be a little overwhelming sometimes with all the options that are out there. How do you even begin a search to figure out what artists do I want? How do I know if I even want them, especially if it's your first tattoo? So to narrow it down, there's four real simple ways if you're unsure where to start. One, you can look on Instagram. Instagram is an awesome resource for a lot of artists and their shops. Most artists will have portfolios, images of their past work on their profile. You can check it out, see if that's the style or level of detail that you're looking for. Another great one is Google, hasn't let me down since. Type in artists or tattoos shops near you. You know, if you're geographically um, limited, see what's available in your area. You can also see a ton of different websites and reviews just using Google alone. Another option is the studio or the artist might also have their own Facebook page. Facebook is a really helpful option too for researching artists because you can get other people's comments or other people's reviews on their Facebook page. Tat Stories actually has their own Facebook page and we have an awesome community that engages with us on Facebook. That's where a lot of our followers get a lot of answers and get a lot of education around what do I want for my tattoo? What artists do I you know, want to look for? Lastly, you can also even look at Yelp. Yelp is a great resource because not only will you see images from that artist, you'll also be able to see reviews from people who have actually gone through that experience with the artist, and you can figure out for yourself what did they like, what did they not like, what's the price range of this artist, and does that fit my budget? 
Um, the other way to look for an artist, good old fashioned window shopping. Take a little stroll, especially if you live in San Diego, you can do it year round. Walk around, see what tattoo, na tattoo studios are in your neighborhood. Stop in, talk to the artist, talk to the front desk person. A lot of artists will have books open and you can flip through their work right there in the studio. They also have flash art on the wall. If you like something, ask who drew it. See if you could talk to them and maybe start designing a tattoo of your own with them. Um, and I'll actually turn it back to you, Kahuna, because little birdie told me that you're getting your very first tattoo in the next, hopefully two to three months if the world opens back up. So why don't you talk to us about what process worked for you in finding your artist and deciding, you know, who you wanted to work with for your first piece. Sure, sure. Before we do that, I want to say one thing about Instagram in particular. Keep in mind that a lot of artists change shops. The best way to follow them and to know where they are is to know their Instagram handle real important so just a little just a little tip that we learned w within uh, you know our travels talking to different artists now for me I've actually picked an artist to do a memorial piece and you know his claim to fame is he actually tattooed somebody's ass and we interviewed him about it that's what did it for you huh yeah that that, that, that definitely was it uh, I think <laughs> I think the important thing associated with my my selection of him and his name's Hollis Cantrell. He's out of Glendale, California. Shout out Hollis. He's he's an awesome guy. We clicked. Uh, we we've got the same kind of bizarre sense of humor. Uh, I think that uh, he understands what I wanted and why I wanted it. He really got into the fact that you know it was something that he doesn't normally do, but he's incredibly talented. Has a lot of different styles, so as a result, he was, it was pretty easy for him to look at it and figure out what you know my tattoo would look like. So, from my perspective, you know, rapport is an important consideration. Uh, I had it with him. Uh, we've interviewed him a couple of times, and uh, every time he's been a joy to to have a conversation with. And I really appreciate the talent that he, that he brings to the table. And for me, it's exactly what I need and want. So, Kahuna, then the burning question is, is the memorial piece going to be on your butt? No, I can't, <laughs> I, I can't put my mom on my butt. It's just not going to happen. <laughs> but I will tell you this, folks. There's a lot of interesting people in that piece. And when I get it, I'll come back and tell you all about it. Because some of them you won't believe... So with that in mind, guess what? Let's see if we can't move on and give you some information associated with the actual selection process. Because you heard a little bit about mine. Well, Katie's got some really good ideas and steps on how you can systemically go through it on your own and pick just the right person to give you that ink that you always wanted on your body. All right. You know, when it comes to, to selecting a tattoo artist, I think I kind of boil it down to the where's and the what's. You know, there's three basic factors. Where do you want your tattoo? Because you know what? Size matters. Just an idea. No comment. Where's the location? What kind of technique do you want from a tattoo perspective? And more importantly, what kind of style? Do you want tribal? Do you want traditional? Do you want neoclassical? What do you want? Do you want blackout? You got to know these things. You got to have an idea of what you're looking for because tattoo artists can specialize. And as a result of that, you want to make sure that you get folks that specialize in the style that you want. There are some that are that could do multiple styles, but you want to make sure that you get the right one related to that. So, part of the big part, or actually the big part of any of it, is communication. Katie, why don't you tell them a little bit about how you communicate with your artists and the things you've seen that might help them? Yeah, absolutely. And I can't stress this one enough. I think it's really important to understand that when you go for a consultation with your artist or even just talking to them casually when you step into the shop, it's a two-way street. It's not dissimilar from like a job interview. You have to not only decide if that's the artist that you want, but they're also deciding, is this someone that I want to represent my artwork for the rest of their lives? And that can you know take a few different forms when you communicate with them. I think communication is really big when you might not have 
photos or a drawing of your own that you want to work from. I've seen people walk into a tattoo studio and describe something off the top of their head, and it's up to the artist to interpret that and really build it into a piece that they're looking for. So being able to communicate what aspects of the tattoo are important to you, is it non-negotiable about where it goes on your body, or are you willing to be flexible about that? And then don't be afraid to ask follow-up questions. You can text your artist, email them, you know, give them a phone call, whatever they prefer, to make sure that you know, if they send you a draft or if they say, hey, did you want this in color or black and white, you can be very clear about what you're looking for and sort of build that piece together as you go. And I can actually give you an anecdotal story. Um, one of my favorite pieces, which is a Irish chalice on my inner bicep, shout out to Bill Webb from Heart and Soul Tattoos in Chicago. I went to three different artists before I found Bill and he was willing to work with me on what I wanted. And that can be a little bit of a stressful process sometimes. Um, I had two other artists tell me, no, I'm not willing to tattoo you, what you're asking is impossible, or it's, it's not something that I'm comfortable putting on your body. Um, I debated with folks about the angle of it, how big, how small, how much detail. And then I sat down in Bill's shop. As soon as I sat down and was talking to him about what I wanted, he understood the importance of it to me. He was willing to go the extra mile and figure out where do you want this on your body? Okay, the, the metal work is important to you. We'll put special emphasis on that and pull back on some other detail to give you what you want. He was extremely flexible and it was a really great series of conversations with very clear communication that resulted in one of my favorite tattoos to date. You heard it, folks. You get your favorite ink if you're aligned with your artist and you're in constant communication and you guys are speaking the same language. Absolutely, and if you like what you hear, feel free to set up a consultation. Um, some of these conversations might happen during a consultation, some might not. Some artists will sit down with you to have a consultation and then bring you the draft, the day, or tattoo, and still then you guys can talk through a couple tweaks here or there. Artists have some really amazing tools these days. They use digital iPads, photo editing software. You can move pieces around, you can shade, unshade, really making sure that you know the artist is comfortable putting that on your body with that level of detail, but also that you're going to be proud to wear that tattoo for the rest of your life. Absolutely, and I, I said it before, and people probably blanch, but I'll say it again, size matters. Because where you put it on your body, guess what? The size has got to scale to the part of your body that is going. Then it looks so much better. And your artists will know that. And they're actually very good at helping you when you've got a rapport to say, you know, that'll look pretty good right there. Or they might go, no, you want to put it over here. And you know what? Most of the time, they're right. Absolutely. As a female, for example, I've had artists who've been really helpful to give me feedback on, well, if you want this to really kind of flow with your form around your hips or around your torso, you know, as a female, if you want it to look like a feminine enhancement to your body, I would recommend doing it this way or angling it slightly different. And it actually really makes a huge difference in how that tattoo not only looks, but moves on your body as you go throughout your day. So keep in mind, folks, two things, where it is, how big it is, and you know what? Ultimately, from a gender perspective, it may look good on one body type versus another. Take all those things into consideration as you start to plan for your ink. You know, we've covered a couple of steps that are important in finding a tattoo artist. How you search, and how you actually select the artist and some of the practical tips to finding just the right person. But you know what? We want to do so much more at Blue Collar Ink we thought we'd bring you some of the ideas that tattoo artists have when it comes to developing that rapport. What do they have to say? Take a look at this and see what some of them have to say about their experiences in establishing relationships, putting ink on folks' bodies, but more importantly, helping people select and get just the right ink. Take a look. My clients are super considerate, like, if they are running late or they need more time to get to the studio, they give me a heads up. If I'm running late and I have to give them a heads up that I'm running late, they don't stress, they don't pressure me, they don't get bent out of shape, they're understanding about this harsh Houston traffic. Uh, second thing that makes a client a favorite of mine is that they remember to get me treats. Uh, I love energy drinks and I love food because hungry artists do not pull straight lines. Uh, so they make sure that, you know, it, to ask me if I'm hungry or if they can bring me some snacks or if they can bring me food. 
Uh, I've had anything from homemade cookies to like steaks from Saltgrass Steakhouse get brought in for me. I'm such a sucker for steaks and homemade food though. Homemade food made with love is always the best. Pork free though, because I'm allergic, all right? Uh, and then besides that, clients that refer to me, other clients that are just like them. Like they love being obnoxious and bragging and tagging me in their posts on Instagram, in their posts on Facebook. Well, uh, what I think makes a great client and our good characteristics of a good client are uh, being very open and free with the design process, letting the, uh, the artist pretty much take creative freedom. Um, and also just uh, not being real nitpicky um, and just having a good time, good, good attitude about it all. And uh, yeah, just being really open is probably what I, I would say. <laughs> You know, Katie's got some other interesting ideas and important things you need to think about when it comes to getting a tattoo and talking to an artist, maybe evaluating what they can and can't do and what their shop's all about. Katie, why don't you tell them some of the things you've encountered? Yeah, absolutely. I know we talked a lot about communication, which I think is definitely a number one priority when it comes to figuring out what artist is going to be right for you. There's so many other factors to consider as well. One really important one is going to be what's your budget and what's the price range of the artist and the shop that you want to go to. There are different ways that artists structure their pricing. Some might do it by the hour. Some might do it by the size or the complexity of your tattoo. Some might even do it in bulk if they say, okay, you're getting more than three hours worth of a tattoo. Instead of 150 bucks an hour, I'll knock it down to 125 because you're getting a very large piece. So I think that's really important too because you know falling in love with a tattoo is one thing, but if it's going to break your bank, you really need to be strategic about you know what can I afford and over what amount of time. My personal opinion is if it's going to be on you forever, it's probably worth the extra money, but you want to make sure that you're not getting ripped off as well. And I think if an artist really takes into consideration what's important for their customers, they're going to price it appropriately for the amount of skill and expertise that they're putting on your skin. Another big area too with tattoos is cleanliness and sanitation of the studio. So tattooing is a cosmetic procedure, but it's still a procedure that can actually draw blood. The needle is going into your mesoderm, into your skin. And so you wanna make sure that any artist you go to has very stringent cleaning and sanitation procedures. You wanna make sure every needle is wrapped and opened in front of you when they use it. You want to make sure their station is orderly. You also want to make sure you check with them about the types of gloves they use. A lot of people, including one of our members of Tat Stories, Jessica, has a latex allergy. And you can have really serious consequences if they're using latex gloves, even ink that might have latex traces in it on your skin and you're allergic. So make sure you're having that conversation and you're also using a very keen eye when you walk through the studio to make sure that they're taking every precaution possible to give you the safest experience possible. And the other thing I'd mention just to close it out is keep in mind that some of these folks, the artists that is, actually have some very unique training. They've gone to safety courses where they learn about bloodborne pathogens, where they learn about safety and execution from a, from a sanitary perspective. I mean, they're literally certified. Uh, I'll put a little bit down below about one of the organizations that provide artists that certification so that you know, and maybe you can ask and see if they have it. They may, they may not. But you know what? It's becoming more and more prevalent within the tattoo community because artists want to make sure that you're comfortable with the fact that they will, that you will not bring any issues or concerns from an infection perspective. All right, guys, thank you so much for listening, joining. Hopefully you've learned a thing or two from how to search for your artist, what things to consider, and again, most importantly, how to communicate to get the piece that you want. If you guys enjoyed the content, if you have any other suggestions or questions you want to see on a future Blue Collar Ink segment, make sure you comment below. We'd be happy to read through and provide some future content for you. And as always, if you want to follow our Tat Stories journey, hit that subscribe button. Make sure you stay up to date on everything we got coming out for you. And last but not least, we want to make sure that we build this community with engagement. Head over to tat-stories.com and you can submit future questions for a blue collaring segment. Maybe even bet on what Kahuna is going to get for his memorial tattoo. Thanks so much. This is Kahuna. We're out.